I'm Colby Jupinville, and welcome to the Center for Student Coaching and Success right here on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University. This is Coaching Module 4, and Coaching Module 4 is on dominant focus and the ideal career. And so you're going through these podcasts because uh, I think it's really important for you to get your mindset in a place that uh, allows you to, to go through this process. And the process that we use here, as you know by now, is called the Five to Arrive. You've been through a, an extensive application process that allows you to hopefully uncover more about you. Because, you know, we're taught that the way that you get more is through more education, is through more opportunity, is through more information. But but really, I think it starts with getting more of you. And, and so today, as you go through this process, I hope that you'll think about that, that idea. The focus for today is on this idea of a dominant focus. It's something that I've used um, probably for the last 10 years now. And it, this dominant focus is ultimately this one thing. You know, goals are some of the most overused and underdone words in our culture. And so what happens is when we decide to set goals and we don't achieve those goals, then what we do is we just lower the goals or we say, well, wait till next year. And so what I would rather you do as you're going through this process is really be get clear about this one thing. It's called a dominant focus, the dominant focus. And the dominant focus is this one thing that you want to try to achieve in 30, 60, 90, 120 days. For me, as you sit here, the dominant focus for me, if I'm coaching you, is gainful employment prior to walking across the stage at graduation. Gainful employment. And so we've learned that gainful employment is different than employment because gainful employment is about trading, is not about trading time for money. Gainful employment is where you receive some kind of psychological benefit from the work that you do. It's about meaning and purpose and contribution as opposed to employment where you trade time for money. They're your choice. They're your choice. But here's what I would submit to you. If you're going to make an investment in higher education, if you're going to invest your time, your money, your resources, your energy, then certainly you need to be clear about what the end game looks like. So as you have the worksheet in front of you, let's go through a couple of those ideas. Look at the first one there. And these were these were built for a reason. Look at this first question. You know, I went through my 20s and nobody ever asked me this. And I think it's so important. Answer the following question. What is the highest value of your time? Don't think about that in terms of money. Think about that in terms of how it relates to your dominant focus. You see, the only way that you can understand truly what the highest value of your time is, is if you define your dominant focus. For me, the dominant focus for me was at one point in my 20s was to become the next great college football coach. And so every decision that I made up until I was hired down in Mississippi to start a college football team from the ground up. No phones, no computers, no players, no uniforms, just a dream. Every decision I made was how would this help me become the next great college football coach? The highest value of your time can only be answered once you define what your dominant focus is. Your dominant focus is directly related to your voice, which is the intersection of talent and passion and conscious and need in the world. Talent and passion and conscience and need in the world. So look at that next question. Now answer this question. What is the what is your dominant focus? What is the one thing you want to accomplish while spending time in the program? Well, I think we've made that pretty clear. What you want to accomplish here is to become gainfully employed in your chosen career path prior to walking across the stage at graduation. And if you say, hey, uh, Dr. Jeebenville, I can't I don't know what that is yet. I'm not really clear. That's what this process is about. Maybe you do know what that is. Maybe you can uncover that. Maybe it is possible. But if it's not, the cool thing is we have. We have processes in place to help you do that. And one of the best ways we can do that 
is through this thing called the Harrison Assessment, which we'll be exposed to later, that provides reports that will help you. In fact, one of these reports will help you understand. In fact, it spits out based on your specific answers. It provides you feedback about here is what you could possibly do with an undergraduate degree. Here is what you could possibly do uh, with a graduate degree. Here is what you could do with a terminal degree. That's how sophisticated the process is. Once you answer that question, now you can start to answer what is the highest value of your time. Dominant focus, highest value of your time. The dominant focus in this program should be related to what it is that you want to accomplish in terms of gainful employment prior to walking across the stage of graduation. You see, once you do that, once you do that, then it's three three things a day, five a week, 60 a month towards that dominant focus in your life. Can you do three things a day? Three, what we call high value activities a day, five days a week, not seven days, just five days a week, 60 times a month towards that dominant focus. Because here's what I believe. And I know this is true because I've done it in my own life. Once you understand the dominant focus, once you understand the highest value of the time, once you build this high value activity system, three a day, five a week, 60 a month, dominant focus in your life, you can't be stopped. No one can stop you from finding the success that you want. This is a critical piece in module number four, three a day, five a week, 60 a month towards a dominant focus. You say, hey, Dr. G, we'll give me an example of dominant focus. I mean, give me an example of uh, high value activities. Let's say that. Let's say that you've decided that you want to go to dental school and that you've made your mind up that going to dental school and becoming a dentist is your dominant focus. It's related to your voice, the intersection of talent and passion and conscience and need in the world. <clears throat> now, every decision that you make is based on this idea. So let's say that you're looking for opportunities because you need to make some money because you don't want to take on student loan debt. And you're looking between um, working at a big box retail store versus doing some homework, using some relationships, finding some connection and getting to a dental office where you can work as a receptionist or work in billing or work in. Uh, patient care or work in any other aspect related to the business that doesn't require obviously the licensing and credentials yet to do that. And now you're in that environment and now you meet those people that do that on a daily basis. And now they show you what the business really looks like and what the challenges really look like. And then you meet the dentist who explains to you what his or her biggest challenge was while in dental school and that transition from high school to college to graduate school to practice. You see, you start to get all that information and that speeds up this process that allows you to ultimately become gainfully employed. That's dominant focus. And that dominant focus leads you, leads you right to this thing called the ideal career. It's a simple exercise. Read, read the directions there. Write a job description about your future career, right? How you see your role? How would you want to be held accountable? What results would you like to drive? And how would you want to be incentivized? You know, this is such an interesting exercise. If you could build, if you could build a job description for yourself, what would that job description look like? If you're in sales, how would you want to be incentivized? If you were in education, how would you want to be incentivized? We know that behavior that is rewarded is behavior that is repeated. We know that that's the case. And so as you go through this process, you know, here's one of the things I want you to think about. Companies want to know two things today. If you decide that you want to work within a company, they want to know two things today. How do you make them money and how do you save them money? How do you make them money and how do you save them money? And then once you decide on those two things, the next thing they want to know is, uh, can you do one of, of really four basic things? Can you sell something, create something, solve a problem or add immediate value to them? 
and immediate value is ultimately probably in a way that allows them to make or save money. And so this exercise is built so that you can, in fact, think through that, write how you see your role. You know, we've learned, you learn through this process that leaders and managers do two things every day. They solve problems and make decisions. Solve problems and make decisions. If you want to solve problems and make decisions, then get into leadership and management. If you don't want to solve problems and make decisions, then do not get into leadership and management. How do you want to be held accountable? How would you like to be held accountable? You know, one of my first um, contracts, one of my first contracts was with a mentor of mine who was actually on my board of directors. His name's Brian Shulman. He said, Colby, we're going to give you the opportunity. And the way that I do this is I'm going to give you the resources. I'm going to tell you exactly what I want you to do. And then I'm going to get out of your way. And the only time that I want you to come to me is if there's a problem that you can't solve on your own. I love that. I loved being held accountable that way because it allowed me to ultimately make decisions and solve the problem the way that I wanted to and to come back and drive those results that I wanted to create in the way that I wanted to do it. He didn't care how I did it. He just wanted the results that he asked me to create for uh, him and, and his organization. It's called ideal for a reason. And I think the sooner that you can start to have this conversation with yourself, the sooner you can start to have this conversation with employers. One of the things that I do know about employers is that if you're good, they'll pay you more. If you're good, they'll give you the, um, the way to hold yourself accountable. And when I say good, it's one of those areas. Solve a problem, create something, add immediate value, sell something. That's what companies want to know that you can do for them. That's based on how you can either help them make money or save money. Review that. It's a lot of information at once. Dominant focus, the ideal career. This is module four. This is the Center for Student Coaching and Success. This is Middle Tennessee State University and the College of Behavior and Health Sciences. And I am Colby Jubenville.